Hundreds of years ago, a young scientist and adventurer named Charles Darwin was sailing on the Beagle, dozens of miles offshore, when he noticed something strange was happening. I am sure that a few days ago there were none of these spiders on the ship, and now there are so many of them. It must be one of those species that is able to fly using air currents, or perhaps by means of electrical charges. More than two centuries ago, these flying spider species were already known and scientists discussed their theories on how a spider could fly without wings. Unfortunately, they lacked the tools to test these theories. By making observations on the ground, they realized that these flying spiders, of which several species are known, including Aragon dentipalpus, had a similar behavior. They would look for a high place, do a little dance and fly away. This process is known as ballooning. A more detailed analysis allowed the scientists to realize that, before flying away, the spider performed the following ritual. It would stick to the ground using a spider web as a safety rope. Then, it raised its abdomen and released more webs, which remained suspended in the air. And finally, after they were long enough, the safety web was cut and the spider flew away. With that information alone, if we compare the spider to a dandelion seed, we could theorize that what the spider is doing is increasing its resistance to the wind so that the wind will carry it away. So far so great for our theory of flying with the help of the wind, but there were several problems with it. The spiders were able to take off even with very light winds. There were larger spiders that should have had difficulty being swept through the air, but still managed to soar. And perhaps the biggest contradiction of all was that the takeoff speed was often even greater than the wind speed. The way to explain this behavior was by considering the interaction of electric charges. Electric charges, which can be positive or negative, are attracted by their opposite charge and repelled by their own. Following this principle, it was possible that the spider used this repulsive force to fly away. But how? Where did these charges come from, and how did the spider control them? At first glance, it would seem that this theory leaves us with more questions than answers. The key information here, to decipher the mystery, is that both the ground and the surrounding atmosphere can be electrically charged. It may be hard to imagine or to remember that these electrical charges are there, since we usually are not able to see them. But think of a battery. We know that it has a positive pole and a negative pole. We also know that trying to directly connect the two poles creates a short circuit and creates a spark. This spark is created because the negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positive pole of the battery because there is a potential difference or voltage and reach a point where they are so close, but without making contact, that they manage to move through the air by a process known as ionization. Now think of a thunderstorm. The lightning would be analogous to the spark of the battery and therefore, doing a little reverse engineering, we will realize that for these to be generated there must be a potential difference between the ground and the atmosphere. This potential difference is not always large enough to produce lightning. But the charges are there, so don't forget it. Let's reanalyze the situation. With this new information, let's say that the ground has a negative charge and the atmosphere has a positive charge. Since the spider will be in direct contact with the floor it will also have a negative charge and, therefore, could be repelled by the floor. Well, not exactly. If it were that easy, all ants and small enough insects would be floating in space. If we analyze the ritual of the spider before flying we'll realize there is a step that could be giving us a clue, which is the moment when the webs are thrown into the air. At this moment, the webs separate individually, which is quite strange if we do not consider the electrical charges, since there is nothing to prevent them from getting entangled. But when considering the electrical charges it makes a lot of sense, 
as each spider web thread will be negatively charged and therefore repel each other, and also at the same time they will be repelled by the charge of the ground as they all have the same polarity. This behavior is exactly the same as what happens to our hair when we rub it with a balloon, because in doing so we are charging it positively while the balloon is negatively charged. In this way, the force of repulsion between the spider and the ground manages to be greater than gravity and, when we cut the safety web, it's expelled towards the sky. In fact, if we cut paper and bring a balloon that we have just rubbed close to it, the papers will fly away, as will our spider. But it doesn't end here. We still have some unsolved mysteries. Going back to the example of the balloon in our hair, how is it that the spider manages to make its webs behave in a similar way to our hair, but without rubbing against anything? Is it possible that the spider is sensing something that we are unable to see? To solve the last mysteries that we have left regarding the flying spider, again our friend Charles Darwin will help us to understand what is happening. Because during a storm in one of his trips he described the situation as follows. Everything is in flames, the sky with lightning, the water with luminous particles, and even the very masts are pointed with a blue flame. This last sentence refers to a phenomenon known as St. Elmo's fire, which, hundreds of years ago, was considered a sign of good fortune for sailors during a storm. It may sound like fiction but this phenomenon is real, although technically it was not fire, but electricity. In fact, to this day this phenomenon can be seen in situations where there are large potential differences between an object and the environment. For example, in high-voltage pylons, the Tesla coils, or in the case of St. Elmo's fire, the flagpoles of a ship during a storm. An interesting fact about this phenomenon, known today as the corona discharge effect, is that there are certain areas that are more prone to this occurrence, which generally are pointed locations. And from here on out I will be supported by Erica Morley and Daniel Roberts' scientific paper on how electric fields cause ballooning in spiders, as they finished unraveling these mysteries in 2018. They conducted a series of related tests, and the first of these was to understand how the corona effect is generated in nature. And, as you can see in this simulation, even in a tree, concentrations of electric fields are generated at the tips of the highest branches, which would explain to you why the spiders were looking for high places before they started flying, and also how they became electrically charged without rubbing against anything. And not only that, in this research they were able to demonstrate that by means of small hairs located on the legs, also known as trichobothria, these spiders were able to detect not only air currents, but also electric fields, since they reacted in a different way depending on the stimulus. And as if that were not enough, in this study they put the spiders in a controlled environment without any air current, but with a controlled electric field, and the spiders managed to initiate flight without problems. Even by alternating the electric field they were able to have the spider levitate indefinitely, proving without any doubt that these spiders were electrically charged in order to fly. And with that we now know everything about how spiders fly. There is only one thing left to add. I give infinite thanks to Guillermo Larios from the Black Squid, who made the 3D model of the Aragon Dentipalpus, and who, by the way, has other great works on his website and Instagram. That's all for now, and see you in the next episode.